Hi, I'm Matt Baum with the American Foundation for Equal Rights, and there have been some major developments in the fight to overturn the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA. There are over a dozen lawsuits uh, challenging uh, some aspect of the Defense of Marriage Act, and this week we got one more. Immigration Equality has filed a lawsuit over the ban, which prevents the recognition of legally married spouses, uh, including the foreign-born spouses of American citizens. Uh, so on Wednesday of this week, in addition to these, uh, this case that Immigration Equality has filed, uh, a court in Boston heard arguments in two other cases involving DOMA. My guest is Levi Soloway, co-founder of uh, Immigration Equality and uh, now the head of Stop the Deportations. Levi, you were at the hearings in Boston this week, so set the mood for us. Uh, what was uh, at stake at these hearings and what was the mood in the courtroom? Uh, well, first of all, the, you know, the, this particular uh, day in court was a long time coming and was the first time that the Defense of Marriage Act was challenged before a federal appellate court. So for our movement and for all of us who've been fighting for marriage equality, it was a first. The attorneys themselves, and of course all the plaintiffs were present, the attorneys uh, were themselves luminaries, uh, well known to many people. Paul Clement representing Blag for the Congressional Republicans defending DOMA, Mary Bonato for GLAD, Gay and Lesbian Advocates and Defenders. Uh, really, uh, one of one of our movement's lead attorneys who's, who has been uh, championing marriage equality and DOMA litigation for years and working on, on this case for many, many years. Um, and the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts was represented by the Attorney General's office, and the Obama administration was represented by an assistant attorney general named Stuart Dillery, uh, who is newly appointed to the position and who is an openly gay man. So a lot of really fascinating people all there in one place. What were some of the big moments and the, the large takeaways from yesterday? Uh, I would say that there were probably the, the single greatest highlight uh, was the admission by uh, the Obama Justice Department that it was uh, no longer going to defend Defensive Marriage Act, uh, even if the court uh, applied a rational basis standard, meaning even if it was the lowest level of scrutiny. And, and I think most people don't realize that when the Obama administration announced um, on February 23rd, 2011, that they had determined the Defense of Marriage Act to be unconstitutional, they had actually determined that it failed under what's called heightened scrutiny. Uh, and, and they had conceded that if a court were reviewing the Defense of Marriage Act only for a rational basis, that they felt that the uh, statute could be sustained. That, that had not been discussed very much, and I don't think many people thought that there would be a moment where the Obama administration would be forced to defend DOMA on rational basis. But that, that moment happened in the First Circuit Court of Appeals yesterday, and it happened because the First Circuit does not have a heightened scrutiny standard and appears to have a rational basis standard when it comes to sexual orientation-based discrimination. And so the panel of judges asked Stuart Dillery whether the administration would therefore uh, take the position that DOMA was uh, constitutional under the rational basis standard. And uh, Mr. Dillery surprised everybody by saying that the administration would not that the administration would not defend. In fact, he said that he was there at the direction of the president and the attorney general to tell the court that the administration would not defend DOMA even on a rational basis standard. And in fact, he said, I am not here to defend DOMA on any basis. Um, I, I thought it was particularly interesting that the, that the man who delivered that message to the First Circuit is himself a, an openly gay man uh, who... Um, was wearing what appeared to be a wedding band, and I'm told that he is married. And, um, you know, further that he was charged with the responsibility to rebut Paul Clement's argument on procreation, and he and his husband or his partner are raising two children, and he had the opportunity to talk about uh, the importance of um, protecting all families and the value of parenting, whether the parents are gay or straight. And I thought it was very interesting that it impacted him personally and that he made some, he made very... Uh, strong arguments. It's a reminder of how close to home this argument hits, even for, for gay couples, but also just for anybody, because we all have gay family members. And it sounds like just as Obama's evolving on the issue of allowing American citizens to marry, the Department of Justice is evolving on the issue of recognizing the marriages that already exist. It, it, really, it was a great moment, Matt. It really was. And uh, it foretells 
good things for all of us in terms of how this litigation will go and other and, and also how other cases will proceed. Now, we don't have a timeline for the court to rule on these two particular cases, but in the meantime, there's still a lot going on. Uh, so what are you doing right now to try to protect uh, binational couples? Right. So, you know, in, in the work that I do, which revolves around uh, gay and lesbian Americans who are married to foreign nationals and who are fighting for green cards or fighting to stop deportations, um, we're continuing, uh, you know, to work uh, on, on several different tracks at the same time. There, as you mentioned, there's now a lawsuit that has been filed in the Eastern District in New York. We are arguing also outside the courtroom that as long as that lawsuit is uh, ongoing, that it would make sense for the administration to hold all green card petitions uh, filed by married same-sex couples in abeyance and not to deny any of those under DOMA. Right. Well, so uh, how can people connect with Stop the Deportations if they want to find out more and get involved? Sure. Uh, if you want to learn more about our work or if you uh, want to become involved in our work, visit our website at stopthedeportations.com. Um, and, it, you know, if you're out there, you're a binational couple and you need help, feel free to contact us. Um, we are interested in uh, including more couples in our work. And uh, we also do provide free legal, free legal advice and uh, referrals. So, you know, please do contact us. And if you're interested in working on our advocacy for abeyance, uh, you know, we're, ha we're happy to have uh, more, more folks join our cause. All right. Well, it's a fast-moving issue, really complex, and we'll need to stay tuned for a lot more development soon. Levy, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Matt. You can stay subscribed, uh, so you can stay connected to this case and the fight for equality by subscribing to this channel at the American Foundation for Equal Rights. I'm Matt Baum.